Hello. Today we're going to go through replacing a seal on a W plus pump. We will work on the single seal setup today. First thing we, we need to do is to remove the pump casing. To do that, we have to remove the clamp. This nut here that holds the clamp on is normally torqued tight. So I would take a wrench, pop it loose. When I remove the clamp, I usually will hold on to the casing, make sure it doesn't fall off. Casing now, uh, normally, is actually on pretty tight. We normally take a, a rubber mallet of some sort. In this case, I'll just use my hand. We'll pop the casing off. Inspect the casing, make sure there's no contact or any rubbing. If everything's good, set it aside. So what we have right now is the single seal is located right here behind the impeller. So half the seal is mounted in the impeller, the other half is mounted into the back plate. So we will take the impeller off. To do that, I need to hold the stub shaft and remove the impeller nut. The stub shaft has a balance hole on the side. In order to keep it from rotating, we will use a bar. In this case, I'm actually using a half inch adapter. Place it in the hole and this will stop it from rotating. The shields have to come off. There's a shield on the right and left side. On this side, it's removed already, so I will loosen up the set screw. Remove the shield. I will take a socket and put it on the impeller nut. I will then hold this stub shaft in place and loosen this. Now this is a demonstration pump. So this component here is, is not torqued down right now, but normally you would break that free. Remove the impeller nut. The impeller nut also has a washer on it right here. We're now removing the impeller. The impeller has a seal. Underneath this seal is an O-ring. So we'll remove both components. On the back plate right here is also the second seal which you'll remove the seal and the O-ring. There's also a flow diverter that is used when you install a single seal. What this piece is used for is when a single seal is installed in the pump, goes in here and if for some reason this seal were to leak product then would go in under here through this channel and under the spring and out the back what this does it prevents the spring from getting full of your product and even though it may be slightly leaking the pump will continue to run properly and you have time to schedule your maintenance on the pump so at this point you have a choice of cleaning this up and installing new seal components We'll go ahead and take this uh, back plate off to see what the components are. Take a six millimeter Allen wrench. And what we're doing here is I'm loosening up some clamps that are on the back. And I will show you what these look like after I get them off. You can see one of the clamps right here. And I'll take the cover it off. So right here, 
we have a clamp on the both sides of this back plate in order to hold it in place. Now notice this back plate has a pin. That pin is normally the top of the pump when your discharge is facing up. Notice there's a groove right here that lines up with the pin. If we want to have a discharge that's horizontal, we would rotate the back plate. We would then take the clamps and move them to the right and left side to the other holes. And then it would be mounted like this. For what we're doing, we'll leave it like this. Let's take off the seal components and see what they look like. There's normally four screws that hold the seal components in place. seal housing, we have a spring, we have a pressure plate. You notice this little pressure plate here is concave on one side, on the other side has tabs on it, concave so it can hold the spring, and the housing lines up. Now if you notice there's tabs on the outside of this component here. Those tabs line up with the grooves in the back of the uh, seal housing. So you can clean this up. When you're looking at a single seal, these are the components, that and the seal faces. For single seal, these are the components. You have three components, that and the, the two seal faces and two O-rings. So let's reassemble this. First thing I'm going to do, take the pressure ring. You have the tabs that are on the bottom, they face down. Because I am using this with a vertical output, I am going to align the pin up. I then will place our pressure ring with the tabs that protrude here down and the groove in the top that holds the spring will face up. Now notice these tabs here fit in between the two the mounting bolts here. As so. Install the spring. And now we'll put the seal housing on and I'll put it on, I'll press down and I'll line those tabs up with the grooves again. And sometimes you have to wiggle a little bit to get it to line up. I'll get a screw ready to put in. each one down. It doesn't have to be Superman tight, but tight enough to uh, keep it coming loose. Again, normally there's a fourth uh, bolt right there. And if you look carefully right here, you'll see that the notch from the pressure ring is in that tab. And you can see the same on the opposite side here. So at this point, I will install this on the pump. I have to twist those clamps to get them 
lined up in place. So, do a zoom right here so we can see how that clamp is located, clamping the back plate to the motor adapter. Now, I will install the seal into the pump. So, we have the seal, it's a little wider here. I have the o ring on the seal. I'm ready to install. The leak path on the back, it just pushes in the back there. Now we put this in, in here, line up the, uh, the tabs and push it in, usually three times, that way it stays in place. It, it allows that O-ring to kind of level out. If you push it just once, you'll find that O-ring will roll and then sometimes it'll roll out and push that seal right out. So by pushing it three times, it seems to set it in place. And now we'll take the impeller seal. I will line the notch up of the impeller seal with the pin that's in the impeller. And I find for this particular seal, I put the O-ring in the back of the impeller and then put the seal in. So O-ring is in. Line up the notch. And again, I have this seal here. If you notice, it's at an angle right now like this. The pin is here. I have the pin lined up. We're at an angle. And now I'm going to push the seal and pop it in. And by doing that, I can press the O-ring on this side. And that seal pops in much easier. So just like that. Now, there's an O-ring here on the shaft. I recommend replacing that O-ring, so take that O-ring off, throw it away, put a new O-ring on. Put the impeller on here. Now, I replaced the O-ring already on the nut for the impeller. So I have the O-ring here on the impeller nut, but I remember to lubricate this because when you tighten this down, you don't you want it to sort of slip while you tighten it down. If you put it on dry, there's a good chance that that O-ring will kind of bulge out. So we'll tighten this down by hand. This being a cutaway, uh, we always have that O-ring want to spread out there a little bit. So there is a torque value on this nut. You look up in the manual, see what the torque value is on this nut. Take your bar, again, place it into your stub shaft here. So we'll do that right here. At this point, we'll go ahead and tighten down that rotor nut. Once that's tight, it's time to install the casing. We have a casing O-ring right here. It goes around the outside of this. Uh, it is very important that you lube this O-ring. Uh, it, it just allows everything to slide on together much easier. So I'm gonna grab some silicone lube. So you just go ahead and put a little bit on here. So the 
Cover O-ring. And now it's very important. We have a pin right here. Again, we have to line that pin up with the casing. So right here on the casing, you can see a little notch. That has to line up with this pin. We have that. And now we'll take the clamp and I'll put the clamp on. Now it is very important that on this clamp that you put anti-seize on the threads right here. We do this because when you torque this down, there's quite a bit of load on this clamp and it prevents it from going. So, this clamp has a torque spec. So in the book, you'll find a torque value for this clamp. Go ahead, take your torque wrench, set it to the correct setting, tighten it down. At this point, what I recommend is to just take this and spin it. Make sure that impeller spins freely. Um, you can only reach in and spin the sub shaft it's just been freely, you shouldn't hear any scraping. You will get some resistance from the seals. Now you can install your ports back into your piping and you're good to go.